Okay, welcome to our week one for the EE Laws Code and Ethics. Our first topic is all about New Electrical Engineering Law of 1995 or the Republic Act 7920. This law represents us. You as a future electrical engineer, as my student now, this will be your guide law. Soon. Objectives for this course is you need to familiarize the articles and sections of the law. It require all of your time in readings and understanding of the law. Uh, you need to compare the old law and new electrical engineering law. Okay, what will be the intended learning outcomes? You can now discuss RA7920, also known as the new EE engineering law, uh, rather the new electrical engineering law, and its importance in the electrical engineering profession. Article 1 of the RA7920, composed of the title and definition of terms. Take note, the definition of terms of this RA7920 is commonly used in some of the problems and questions in board exams. And you need to familiarize each of the terms. The section 1 of the Article 1 represents the title of the Republic Act. This is the new electrical engineering law. The section 2 is giving the definition of terms which is used in this app. The first term is the practice of electrical engineering. This is the category where we as an electrical engineer are uh, going into what kind of field or what kind of profession, what do you want to practice. Now, the first one is commonly what we call the consultancy, where as an engineer, you are now engaging in a consultancy project, which requires electrical engineering knowledge. Most of our field is, most of this area, professional electrical engineer or PEE, are in this field, consultancy. The second is the design. Uh, design and preparation of plans are primarily done by registered electrical engineer. And some of the designs were only signed and sealed by professional electrical engineer. This is different from REE to PEE. The third one is the supervision of erection, installation, testing, or mainly the construction and installation of all electrical equipment. Uh, this includes the RME, the Registered Master Electrician, Registered Electrical Engineer, and the Professional Electrical Engineer with the provision of how is uh, what will be the value of the minimum voltage required on a given category. The fourth one is the supervision of operation. Now, this is different from supervision of erection and supervision of operation. Now, the third one is the supervision of erection is what we call supervisor. Your, your designation in the company will be a supervisor or a project manager. Well, the fourth one is the supervision of operation is, is what we call a project engineer. The fifth one is the supervision of the manufacture and repair of electrical equipment including switchboards. Now, you are in the sales part. So in the sales part, you are not only in selling the materials but you are in the warranty area of all electrical equipment that you want to sell, want to manufacture or repair, but you are on the commercial side of the electrical engineering field. The sixth is teaching of electrical engineering professional subjects. Uh, you are now in academe or you are practicing your engineering, electrical engineering field in academe or for continuing professional development such as 
having a master of degree, doctoral degree, or having a any course or any profession which is related to our profession. Then the last one is the taking charge of the sale and distribution of electrical equipment. This is related to category number five. From the sale representative to the maintenance representative of a company. Okay, we have discuss uh, seven practice of electrical engineering which is defined in letter A now in letter B we have the electrical supply equipment this is an equipment which produces modifies regulates or controls the supply of electric energy okay what is electrical supply equipment is what we call generator transformers or any kinds of equipment which is from the keyword produces modifies or any from the supply of electrical energy next one is the electric plant now for the word plant it is an establishment or system for reproduction the keyword is production and modification the keyword for su supply equipment is supply and the next one is power plant design the keyword for design is planning and coordinating layouting that represents power plant design. How about the substation? Substation is commonly used in terms in under distribution utilities, just like Davao Light. We have many substation here in Davao City, and it is represent uh, that uh, it defines a building, a room, or separate place, place which houses or encloses electric supply equipment connected to transmission or distribution lines. So. Can, you can access this or you can see all the structure here besides in the road in Davao City. Next one is the electrical system design. This is similar but almost uh, different from power plant design but almost similar in meaning. Take note, the keyword for electrical system design is requirements for protection, control, monitoring, of electrical system as a whole power plant design is just a part of electrical system design voltage okay you already know this term voltage in your circuits one uh, which is the highest effective potential difference between any two conductors and H the QVA the terms used for transformers, generators, uh, which is refers to the installed capacity of an alternating current. Okay, so we are using kilovolt amperes. Now, if we are using KVA in AC, we are using kilowatt representing the installed capacity in DC or direct current. Utilization equipment, the keyword for that is the energy consuming equipment, including motors, heaters, or furnaces. And now this is specific. How about the industrial plant or factory? Industrial plant or factory is any category on the, on the design side. We have three category on the design part of electrical. The number one is residential. Second one is commercial and the third one is the industrial where you are uh, encountering the assembly plants, shops and shipyards including where electrical machinery and equipment are installed. Okay, which is uh, said earlier about commercial establishment. So these are the category department stores. Those are commercial establishments where used for business or profit. And the industrial plant is where electrical machine and equipment are installed, which is commonly uh, is referring on a big capacity and installed capacity. <coughs> uh, institutional buildings. Okay, forget this to mention, but institutional buildings are referring on the school buildings, hospitals, or any government related institutions or private institutions, which is similar with this. Watercraft. It's any waterborne unit which is designed and built to have an electric plant. So we have, for example, on the 
we have uh, a power plant on in Mati where it is situated in the on the sea watercraft next one is the electric locomotive we have first the power plant mounted on wheels as using the railroad transportation industry now sometimes uh, watercraft is referred also to shipyard as uh, to ship crews which we have which they need an electric plant to run or the electric locomotive is refers to the train MRT or anything which it needs power plant mounted on wheels now article 2 which is the board of electrical engineering board of electrical engineering composed of three members or three persons and they are the one who make exams during board exams and they are under PRC professional regulated commission now what will be the composition of this article said earlier that it composed of three members okay the composition of the board composed of a chairman and a two members currently we have two only appointed by the president of the Philippines so currently we have two and we don't have any chairman for the board of EE now section 4 defines the powers and duties of the board uh, the board shall exercise executive administrative or quasi legislative or quasi judicial which is investigative powers so they are in the rule making and investigative powers these are the following uh, powers and duties of the board they can supervise and regulate the practice of EE that is why they are in part of the PRC making exams for board exam regulating the future electrical engineer passers they are to determine and evaluate the qualification of applicants for registration that is why uh, we need some uh, documents or requirements before you take uh, application for board exam now they are preparing the examination questions yes I said it earlier then they prescribe amend or revise the requirements of PEE now this is mentioned they are the one to amend or revise the requirements for PEE REE and RME after you pass the board exam they are the one who registered successful applicants some, some of the area are having a pinning having a certificate having a oath taking now it's letter F is issuing special permits uh, since we are no, we are not mostly on engaging in specialization of electrical engineering here in the Philippines we are general electrical engineering side they are issuing special permits to foreign electrical engineers look into the conditions affecting the practice of electrical engineering professions and promulgating rules and regulations they are the one uh, implementing the code of ethics checking the practices of electrical engineers here in the Philippines okay since we're already mentioning about the decision making this is also for checking for implementation of law so they are invest they are the one to investigate the relations of the act issue subpoena uh, which is subpoena dosis de cum or the court summons ordering the recipient to appear before the court and produces document or other tangible events for use at the hearing or trial so they need to issue this delegate the investigation of the case to the chairman uh, render decision or order resolution after due notice and hearing so these are so the law making and law implementing part of the board of electrical engineer and administer administer courts the electrical engineering uh, rather the electrical engineers we have a national organization which is IIE and every year we have an annual national convention which they this is the part they submit an annual report on the proceedings and accomplishments during the year 
so that all electrical engineers in the Philippines are aware on the development of our profession. Uh, they are the one who prosecute or institute criminal action, adopt an official seal, which is commonly used by PEEs, coordinate with the commissions and the Department of Education, this is now DepEd. They are prescribing guidelines and criteria on the CPE program requirements. CPE or the CPD is a continuing professional education, but now we are commonly used this as CPD. You are earning units in, units in professional development before you are renewing your license. Uh, perform such other functions and duties. The other duties which is necessary that we can relate in here in this app. Now, how can you be qualified to be a board of electrical engineering? Okay, qualification of being a board member, you need at least five consecutive years living here in the Philippines and it must be a natural born Filipino citizens, citizen. You must be at least 35 years of age and no final conviction by the court or any involving moral turpitude. And becoming a board member of PEE, you must be a PEE with a valid certificate of registration and a valid professional license. And practice EE for a period of not less than 10 years prior to your to their appointment. And not be an official or a member of the faculty. So they are not they must not be related on any schools or any universities. Okay, for at least three years prior to their appointment and it is not associated in review classes because of uh, parang to minimize uh, connections or any cheating arrangement uh, cheating engagement on board exams and commonly they must be a holder of degree of Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from a university here in the Philippines and since there is no forever, but there's a term of office, they shall hold office for a term of three years or until their successor shall have been appointed and qualified. They can be removed upon the recommendation of the commissioner or may be removed by the president of the Philippines. And take note, the compensa compensation of being a chairman or being a member, you are earning 12,000 pesos, not less than 12,000 pesos. Okay, take note, not less than 12,000 pesos, you are earning more And your executive officer of the board, the commissioner shall be the executive officer of the board. 